Good morning, welcome back. A quick follow-up to yesterday's video of the Grosjean bow. Now the question was how does this bow compare to a Ming Moon 4? I don't have the Ming Moon 4, which would be a bit more comparable. I only have the Ming Moon 6 from Marina and to the Raptor by Simon's Bow Company. First of all, a little fresh in the morning. First of all, when we start comparing them, let's talk about directly the price. And there we have the Nomad Tatar from Grosja is 355. The Ming Moon is 420 dollars in the lowest draw uh, poundage version, which is 373 euros. And the Raptor starts at 498. So you have already First one is Grosja, Marina, Simon's Bow Company. Next thing, max draw of all these bows is 32 inches, but from the Marina it's on the belly, not on the back. So that's why the Ming Moon 4 would be better. It draws 31 inches to the belly, would be 32 to the back, but I don't have this one. Then recommendation of arrow weight we have from Marina with nine grain per pound. Uh, Grosia is nothing. And Simon, I'm not sure right now if he recommends now an arrow weight, but we shoot with the same. We have your 37 pounds, 35 and 40. So yeah, you know, it's not a scientific thingy. Then we have the F value, which would be the Ming Moon 6, 058. Raptor, 059. Nomad 061. So they're all very close together. One is a little longer, one is a little shorter. You can see the design. I showed these two already once. The Ming Moon and the Raptor, they look fairly similar. Raptor has more flex in the handle. Sear angle is a little more of the Ming Moon compared to the Raptor. And then you see the design of the Grosja. It's very short and has extra, has a slight flex in the handle. Mm, a little more than the Ming Moon, but has extremely already, as I said at the beginning of the Kassan, is already extremely forward. And then the Bash, the head, even more. So you have the, the tips point already inwards. So this is this thing. But what is important for many shooters is how narrow, and that's why I brought my calipers today, how narrow is the arrow pass? Because some people do, still sh do gap shooting with these bows and stuff like this. So how narrow is the arrow pass? And there we have, I take the, because the, you see it's going from a little wider to a little thinner. So I take the middle part. Okay, so to be, where did I put my glasses? Not there. To be fair, we take the middle of the mariner and there we have 21, 22, 20, 21 millimeters. The Raptor goes all the way in the same has 21 millimeters and the Grosje. Where's the upper part? That's the upper part, but doesn't matter. And the Grosje on the narrowest part directly on the handle has 27 millimeters. So this is for some people crucial. So this one is the less center shot bow. Simon's Bow Company and Mariner are similar. Let's put the caliper away. This is one thing to consider. Good. Let's string the bows. Let's have a look at them strong. What you have and what I said, uh, the arrow pass of the, rep, of the Nomad Tatar is suede. Uh, on my Raptor, it's still some kind of leather, but he changed it now because I mentioned that and he will make now, he does now race skin there. So it's way more durable. So you don't have this 
abrasion showing anymore which you have on both of these bows and Mariner has a sway too and there you see again a lot of abrasion then you, when you buy a bow 350 70 or even 500 euros and then it looks after a few shots <clears throat> when you don't do katra or stuff like this then it looks uh, not so nice anymore so stringing the Noma Tatar easy stringing the Raptor easy so stringing the moon with the step through method yeah easy too but there you need to already check if the loops still align here with the sears because mm -hmm. oh so and so i would say the stiffest in this direction is the raptor then the nomad tatar and then the ming moon ming moon is the most wobbly one but more important is this wobbliness and here the ming moon quite wobbly the raptor not that much but still a bit and this one it's the same as the raptor what you have here you have wider limbs on the raptor which makes it stiff here you have this new material which makes it stiff and overall the mariner is very sleek very thin the, the limbs that's why this one is the most wiggly one so this one needs the most attention when you string it these two i compared already they look really similar but today we do the comparison to the Grosje bow and there you see Ming Moon, the flex of the Ming Moon comes a little more forward from the handle, goes further down and then you have way less aggressive sears on the Ming Moon than you have on the Tatar bow overall. The sears of the Ming Moon are very sleek, very thin, less material here. You have it still way more bulky with the Tatar. Simon compared to, so you have the wider limbs of course, and the sears from, so the head is a little shorter with the tatar but the limbs are still wider here so you have here a bit more weight on the noma tatar than you have here on the raptor as you see it here it's nice so the start of the head is way wider on the nomad than on the raptor but other than that they have yeah you see you see this aggressive start of the kasan should i hold it in front because this one is today the one which has to match so like so you see that more aggressive on the tatar but you know they're all quite similar so i'm not sure if there is a winner or a loser so look at this pose so, you see them all three hanging there let's talk about the handle handle of the grosje bow is just perfect for me but of course you have a very wide arrow pass but the handle is on the back a little thicker and the front is nice and round fits my hand perfect the handle of the Mariner is a little more rounded in the front, a little more narrow than in the back, but this is still 
one of my favorite handles and especially with this wrapping there I like that and then you have a really narrow arrow pass so this is still awesome Simon's handle is the smallest but it still feels good in the hand so this is feels a little uh, feels way less than the other two very narrow here but it still gives you a nice control so for my taste a tiny bit too small for my hand but it still provides enough control like this one and like this one but of course on the other side when you shoot horseback and you have your arrows on your bow hand this bow will be the best option of all three because here you have way more space to put your arrows in when you shoot this Kasai style which is not historically correct but we don't talk about this today so handle is out of the way good draw experience we had that so you feel directly from the beginning the 40 pounds 28 nice and up to 32 in a nice continuous way <coughs> this is 45 pounds at 32 so it's a little less poundage here you don't feel anything here you start feeling it then it goes back some this is still one of my favorites from the draw experience and it's this is 37 pound at 28 From here you start feeling it and then it goes so they are hmm. it's hard to tell so this one is overall the stiffest but it's the it's a 40 pounder 28 so this is even the highest poundage but then nice they're all very similar I think because this one is the longest one this is the smoothest so but of course it's it's way longer than the two others so that's why uh, they're all <laughs> they all feel good so this one when you draw the Raptor it feels good because there is no movement this one when you draw you still feel slightly this because it's a little more wiggly you feel it a bit but as an experienced archer should be no problem and there you don't feel anything it's simply stiff so this is this one feels the most like a weapon let's say so this is really like yeah you have something to hold on the bow goes into your hand you draw and oh, feels feels monstrous but they're all pretty so first you need to decide I think your budget so you have 355 373 498 and then crucial for many aeropass when it's too wide then it's for some gap shooters and stuff like this not really possible so i think gap shooters will not want to use the grosier bow but when you shoot thumb release it's totally no problem you can adapt in a second to this bow and let's shoot i shoot now the same weight arrows because i don't have them in this so First, the grosier again, 32 inches, 50 pounds. Feels good, it's very silent. You only have at the end, two, three seconds, a little vibration. <sighs> Ming Moon 6, there you have a knocking point on it, forgot to mention that one, 32 inches. It's a little louder, but this is, you feel it a little louder. And 
knocking point on it on the Raptor silent and afterwards you have a little you hear that a little two or three seconds like with the uh, like with the closure let me do it again Raptor yeah it's fine Rosia. It's good. <coughs> and the main one. Yeah, this is the loudest and you feel a little... You feel the bow moving more. And uh, this is the, the, the resonance or this, this wiggliness, you feel it a little when you shoot. Let's shoot the wood arrow with the Ming Moon. But yeah, still an awesome bow. The wood arrow with the Grosha. Oh, getting heavy. And the Raptor. Come on, come, 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 come. And you see, you can't tell which arrow was shot with which bow, right? So they are all very similar. The most silent one is the Grosier. Then you have the Raptor, then you have the Ming Moon. But of course, and you, 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 you even hear it. There is the most twang going on. But of course, it's the longer version. So the Ming Moon 4, it's a Ming Moon 6. But still, uh, this is insane to draw. This is more like, oh yeah, give it to me. And this is like, yep. Yeah, they're, they're all. It really depends. Horseback, I would go with the Raptor when you shoot your, your arrows in your fingers, for sure. And for the rest, a matter of budget. And if you're gap shooting or stuff like this, then the narrow arrow pass of these two might better option for you when you shoot thumb release like I do it doesn't matter they are all awesome so for me there is no winner if I have to pick one hard to say but I think it has a carbon layer in it so it's a stable core a spare pro glass has bare pro glass, but it's more wobbly. But it shoots. It's, it's you know. It's it's. A, this is the gentleman bow of these three. I would say you know this is more like it feels like yeah oh smooth, smooth. The Raptor is the multi-purpose smooth and and trustworthy, and the Nomad is. This is the oh, this is the weapon. This is you know you feel this is something for the real man. They're really all very similar. I don't do now a speed test because you know the Raptor does 200. Did I ever do a speed test of the Ming Moon? I don't know, but I think let me shoot some arrows. Let me see. Comparing the speed, but only by feeling or by measuring it. Okay, you heard that. How long it took? Yeah, <sighs> you. There is speed-wise, they're all close. There is no. They're all roughly the same. So even this. It's not a point where you need to reconsider something. 
stringing, Simon's bow easy, Grosjean bow easy. The easy too, but here you already need to check that the string is aligned here. So here it can happen. Now this is a little more wiggly, so with the Mariner you need to take a bit more care, but you should take care of all of your bows. So that's why not even this is a criteria. Wood arrow, 10 meter, Grosjean. Wood arrow, 10 meter, Mariner. Narrow arrow pass, you see the arrow goes to the left. So when you shoot them all mixed, <laughs> you see it. And Simon's Bow Company, wood arrow, 10 meter. <laughs> Simon's Bow Company, 20 meters. Oh, okay, was a little low. <sighs> Oops, and it was a carbon arrow. Uh, Mariner, 20 meters. Mm -hmm. And Grosjean, 20 meters. Mm -hmm. And now 30 meters behind this one. Oops, a little wobbly with the crozier, but it was my release. Mariner. Nice. <coughs> and Simon. There goes. Yeah. You always need to adapt because of the width of your arrow pass. Ah, yeah. See. They are all awesome bows. What can I say to these three bows? They're all insane. They all have their purpose and you should have each of them. So one more time. When you have your arrows on your bow hand, works with, with the grocer, no problem whatsoever. Works. The other way around. You want to do this way you know and you shoot thumb release works so it's okay handle this for this surely a little big but it's doable so with the ming moon rock solid no problem this way around no problem With the Raptor, you have here, because the handle is a little smaller, this feels and the arrows wrap around a little nicer around the handle. So horseback, I would really go with the Raptor if you want to have something sophisticated. And even this way around, yeah, it's, for, for this, when you have the arrows in the bow hand, oops, I would go with a raptor. If you shoot from a quiver or you have the arrows in your hand, then it doesn't make a difference. Then all three will do just fine. This is... Hmm. They're all great. They're all great so this is why do we do comparisons huh look at this this is the mr smooth draw so draw experience if i would have to choose i would give it to the ming moon but keep in mind this bow is a little longer than the other two quite a bit oh this hey when it's wet when it gets... so and this one is it's the ah uh, yeah. yeah it has a little different characteristics but even when you don't full draw these bows they all perform well even when you draw them only 30 inches it's just fine it could do even mediterranean 
Nomad Tatar 28 inches. Boom. Nice. Throws arrow still nice away. The Ming Moon. No problem. And the Raptor. All three, no problem. So it really matters what I mentioned before. Of course, the Ming Moon is now the longer version. You can have a look at the Ming Moon 4, which is size wise a bit more comparable, and Max Draw is still 32 inches to the back. Then you have this one here. Is this, you know, this is the war machine. It's more the. Whoa! This is more the smoothie, but nice. This is the overall, I don't know, for me, the best overall performer because you have the narrow aero shelf, you have wide limbs, you have a stable core, you have carbon in it, so it's a very sturdy bow, but still narrow aero pass, which makes your life easier. Handle could be a little bigger for me, but it's still okay. Mariner is smooth. This is, it's an elegant, you know, even, even the finish, everything is, is more or less this elegant, you know, when you like uh, nice shapes and a smooth draw. Nice. And you have still a quite a narrow arrow pass, of course, down there to the handle, it gets a little wider, but in the middle, you have the same as the Raptor. And this one is the, you know, this is, I said, the war machine. This feels more like, oh, yeah, this is handle of this one I have the most control so Grosha's handle is exactly made for my hand but my hand is a little big but this one is you know this with the with the square back and with the round front it's just it's this is it that's nice too but here I already feel it it's not See, it's not that secure in the hand. This one is a little more oval shaped, so it's a little more secure, but it's smaller. So, and when you see this one, this is in the hand and there's nothing moving. Uh, this bow doesn't go anywhere in the hand. So handle-wise, I would give Grosje, but they're all, it's, it's really, I told you now what I think of these bows. They're all insane, simply know your budget or get all three of them. So this is, with none of these bows, you go wrong. Awesome. 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 All three insane bows. Look, let's take a group photo with all three of them. All three, oops, like this. All three insane good performing well crafted bows this one is from hungary this one is from china and this one is from the netherlands i'm done thank you very much for watching catch you in the next one